So welcome you to the next session in the module four, that is a rule based classification. So in this session, we are going to learn about what is actually a rule based classifier. So when I say rule based, uh, there are some certain rules. So we'll be seeing what is the format of that particular rule. And then uh, we also will see a certain measure uh, through which the quality of the rules can be evaluated as well as we'll be seeing how the rule based classifier is going to work. Okay, so this will be the content for this particular session. We'll try to cover as much as possible. Okay. So to begin the session, um, till now, so far what you have learned, just to have a recap of it. The first thing that you need to know before I start with rule-based classifier is, so what is actually classification is, which you have already studied. So what is the definition of the classification? And once you know what the classification actually is, then you need to you need also to know uh, what how the classification model works. So after classification model works, you also have seen uh, how you will be uh, expressing the test condition with respect to various attributes that is present. So that you'll be uh, that you know actually, right? And then uh, you also have studied. Uh, uh, the one of the important classification technique that is your decision tree induction, which you have already studied, correct? So these are the these are certain things which you need to know before you uh, start start with before we start with rule based classifiers, right? So rule when I say rule based classifier. When I say rule-based classifier, uh, it is the simplest classification technique. So how are we going to perform this classification? Here, uh, the classifiers, we have a set of rules, which we call it as a rule set. There are certain rules that is defined and these rules are put under a particular set called as a rule set. And what we will be doing with this particular rule set is, as you have already studied about the classification model, We'll be using this rule set into the classification model and uh, will be uh, based on the rules, we'll be able to make the classification. So when I say rule set, uh, what is the format in which the rules are to be written is uh, every rule will be in the form of uh, if then. So if then form, it will be every rules and generally uh, its representation will be in the distinct form. So what is the distinct, uh, distinct form representation of each rules that we'll see uh, next. So a rule-based classifier is the simplest technique, okay? So first uh, let's see the uh, rule set representation. How are you going to represent uh, the rule set? Uh, when I say rule set, uh, it will be given a name. Say consider I have given a name as R here. So every rule set R will consist of uh, several rules which are nothing but distinct representation as I told disjunct so it is nothing but or format right so it is that any one of these rules there are k rules present in as represented here there are k rules present so we'll be making use of either all of these rules or a few of these rules for the uh, for classifying the uh, training set that we are having okay so here r will be uh, the rule set name of the rule set or rule set and uh, each of these ris will be the classification rules are disjunct. So when I say classification rule or disjunct, it is this particular representation here is still incomplete. How, how will this R1, each of these RI look like? What does actually it consist of? Uh, that we will see next. So uh, next, uh, this RI, each of these RI is in the form of if then. So what is that if then? We'll see here. So now we'll see the rule representation. So each rule ri is of this particular format. Ri is equal to ri is nothing but a condition, and then you will have a yi. That is, if then generally you know that in DMS you have uh, uh, studied uh, if then is nothing but implication, what we call it as. So you have an imply symbol symbol here. So you uh, it is having two parts. One is left side of the arrow mark and right side of the arrow mark, and uh, uh, the left side of the arrow mark is generally called as rule antecedent. So 
so this word you need to remember students because hereafter in this particular chapter we will be uh, making use of this word called as antecedent whenever i uh, take the term antecedent it is nothing but the left hand side part of the rule so then uh, you have the right part which is nothing but it is rule consequent so you, every rule is having two parts one is rule antecedent and the other one is rule consequent so th even these terms will be used in the next module also uh, that is in the association analysis so it is very important for you to note down this rule antecedent is nothing but left hand side part or the left part or the if part in the rule and the um, rule consequent is nothing but right side part of the arrow mark or i can say it as the uh, class label part okay so this is how each rule is represented now here uh, ri is the actual the rule classification rule or that uh, disjunct and this rule is again still incomplete there i have mentioned here ci so what is this ci ci is actually the conjunction of attribute Whereas Y I is nothing but the class label. We know that in case of classification, you will be assigning a class to uh, each of the test data that has given to us. We have to classify the test data into several class labels that is available. Correct. So Y I represents a class label, and C I is nothing but the attribute test condition, which is nothing but which is also called as conjunct. So what exactly this conjunct or conjunction of attribute test is? will be seeing now so each ci that is the condition part or the antecedent part is represented like this so it is having a attribute and value pair we call it as a attribute value pair so uh, each C, each ci is nothing but conjuncts where ai and vi will be the attribute and the value pair which is also called as conjuncts and then operator is op is nothing but the operator which can be equal to not equal to less than less than equal to greater than greater than equal to the comparison operator or the relational operator what we can consider it to be as so this is how a rule will be so this will be the complete form of the rule that is every rule will have two parts uh, the, uh, the since it is represented as a if and then so if part will consist will be called as a rule antecedent whereas the right hand side part the then part will be considered to be as a rule consequent generally the rule consequent will be the class label it consists of class label and the rule antecedent will be consisting of your attribute test condition the how you represent the test condition so this is how your test conditions will be represented thank you students if you have any doubts or queries or for feedback you can write back to me thank you